Power of the Dominion Life, Volume 6, The Warrior. God spoke to me earlier today and said, It's time for his people to go all out in warfare for a season. Because the enemy has done too many things to stop people from movements. And the Lord said, go all out in warfare. Now, I am not going to express all that I want to express in the spirit by natural words. So sometimes you don't feel like you have the vocabulary of heaven enough to speak in the earth to portray and to convey and to communicate effectively. Not that we can't communicate effectively, but to bring it all forward and all out what God is wanting to do. So by the anointing, some people will experience things that you've never said, but you carried them in the realm of the spirit. Many people will experience things that only come from the touch of God, not by the words of men. Two scriptures that really bring that out doctrinally is where Paul said, I didn't speak with the enticing words of men, but I spoke by the power of the Holy Ghost as he gave me the utterance. And 2 Timothy 1.21, I believe it is, said that prophecy, true prophecy, says, <laughs> there are things that people call prophecy that I wonder about. Uh, because if you say it's a prophecy and it's not a prediction of, of something accurate that really actually uh, ends up happening, it was not a prophecy, but people yet still call it a prophecy. <laughs> There's even false prophecy or presumptuous, or they, they still use the word prophecy, which to me is blasphemy. You know, God is God all by himself, but he has chosen to work with people. So we need to be zealous and jealous over his things. And a defender of the faith. Now, something kind of funny. I was on the phone late last night with a real miracle. I'm under such an anointing here. Oh, my God. And uh, I could tell you some. Someone was brought back from the dead that I prayed for. This week. They died, and they left their body, and they went toward heaven. But I had prayed. And last night, we spoke on the phone for almost two hours. And they sounded as clear and brilliant as ever. No effect from their death. No effect. And the person tried to commit suicide. It took 60 pills, and they said 10 would kill any person. It took 60 of them. The ambulance came, took them. This precious woman had died, but I had prophesied over her many years ago how she would change a whole area of England, and it's been happening, and the, the enemy has fought her. And she just got to a place where she saw no way. And I don't want to tell her testimony because it's devastating what's happened to her in the last season. It's horrible. But she sounded like unaffected because God came and got her out of it. Can we lift our hands up? That kind of miracles, is, these are the miracles we want, we need to see. I remember I was in, uh, where was I? I was in America, and I got on the phone on a three-way call between England, Australia, and where I was in, I think I was in New York. And I prayed 
over a lady who, the baby had died in her womb. The doctors confirmed it was dead. And they would have to forcibly take it out or else the body would begin, the, the dead body would begin to decay and kill the mother. If she had left the dead body in the, in the womb, certainly the woman, the baby was already dead, the woman would have died. So somehow she had a feeling or there was no kicking or there was just this, you know, like a mother can have a sense. I mean, you should know something's wrong. You just feel it, you know. Even in your soul, in your spirit, or in the physical, whatever, she had a knowing, went to the doctor, so the baby's dead. They did the ultrasound, all that. No life. They'll have to remove the they'll have to remove the body of the baby. And I'm telling you what happened. I, I began to pray and prophesy. And I felt the power of God go to from New York to London, uh, where I, it was somewhere in England. It might, it might have been outside of London, and all the way to Australia, where the baby was. And I said, the baby will live. And I began to shout, and I felt the fire of God come out of my mouth and go across the planet. Well, I'll tell you what happened. They sent me a picture uh, of the baby a few years later. They had told me about the testimony, but they sent the photo. And when I saw this girl, you thought, you, you thought it was arranged by Hollywood. They picked the best-looking child with the best-looking clothes, most beautiful, a little long, blonde-haired baby girl running around, and they took a photo. She had a beautiful dress. It looked like something that was staged for a modeling event, and that was this little girl. Can we lift our hands up and say, thank, thank you, Lord, for those kind of miracles. The purpose of us in ministry, and I don't care about these nominal uh, dead, dead religious people, people, they're, they're out of our realm, they're out of our league. We're not, I don't want to say we're not concerned about them, but we're never going to let them act like they're the exemplification of God, because they're not at all. And, I, and I'm getting to the point, I'm getting to the point where I, I, I'm stirred up. I think I've always been like that, but I'm feeling something. We need to def defend, you know. what God is doing, and be into it. And not like sidestep it, compromise it, or... belittle it in any way. And if you get like that, you'll see God really begin to move. This great lady in Great Britain, you're going to tell me about, and remind me, because I hadn't remembered, you know, it was so long ago, how I had prophesied over her, and she told me the exact word that I spoke. You're going to be instrumental in changing this uh, city, this region in England, and you know, after that, it's been happening all these years. And so many things happened against her, she just didn't see her way through. And God taken over by the emotion or whatever. It was a spiritual thing or whatever. And God had me pray and prophesy again last night, a sealing and a covering over her, and that God would begin to go into her mind and take all the memories out and everything like that. It was so, it was just so heavenly. It was so amazing. And she was so happy, not in a, you know, in a colloquial way, but like genuinely in the spirit about the assignment. And here's what happened. So God, God, always, God always glorifies himself in the midst of uh, turmoil, and he'll, he'll take somebody so far that they can have an experience. When she was out of her body, she began to tell me about these hooded, dark creatures, like they look like the, like the Grim Reaper that had a, 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 a robe or a cloak with a, a hood over the top where you couldn't see the, the darkness inside and they were carrying that, uh, that, that stick thing with the sickle knife on the end or whatever, and they were carrying them. And she said she began to see hundreds of them and she saw people going 
with them walking a certain way. And she got their revelation, like the Lord spoke there and said, all you have to do is tell them no. And she said, Lord, she just opened her mouth and said, Lord, I repent of trying to take my life. She said, I repent. She said instantly when she said that, she was free. And those creatures tried to come near her and they couldn't get near her. And she just looked at them and told them, no, I'm not going anywhere with you. And they listened and they began to walk away. Without saying anything, they begin to walk in a different direction. And then she began to saw, see all these people that were going, and they were coming up to them and taking a hold of them and walking. And the people just uh, cooperated and went with them. They were being taken to hell, I, probably to hell, I would imagine. That's what it seemed like to her. Makes sense. And then she looked the other way, and she began to walk that way. And in front of her, she said, were these huge golden gates. Go, like light, you know, moving, gold, whatever it was. Or the, the scripture says they're gates of pearl, solid pearl, which I guess would be reflectively luminescent, the light. But there was, there, there she said she saw gold color and other colors. And, and it was so glorious and so beautiful. The light was so bright that she almost couldn't see uh, the, um, make out everything how it was because it was so glorious. But she said one thing on the other side where those creatures were taking people and wanted to take her until she said, I repent, Lord. And then it all just got fixed. Like in a second, she said, God allowed me to repent outside of my body, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And the Lord gave her a chance to repent. Can you imagine? I'm not telling you something that happened five years ago. I'm telling you something that happened last this week. And I got the confirmation last night at the middle of the night, whatever time it was. I heard that funny ring on our messenger and it went, doo -doo 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 that ring turned. I was like, whoa, who's that? International. I was expecting a call from an apostle in Nigeria or, you know, someone, you know, major internationally. That's the only reason the phone would ring like that. I have it set like that. And, um, <laughs> And I just instantly grabbed the phone and looked and saw it. I said, ah, look, she's calling. This is someone that nobody knew if she was dead. And she had written a post on social media that she was saying goodbye. She had taken all these pills. And see you on the other side. Sorry. That's what she wrote. I said, no. I, I wrote her. I called. She, there was no answer. The internet was still on, and by this time she was in this experience, this whole thing was going on. She was taken to the hospital. They said they were going to pump her stomach out and all that, and, and uh, when they tried to do it, it was like nothing was there. It's like the whole, all of this stuff dissolved. And 60 pills, would 10 would kill anybody. And she took 60. And she wrote in the post that she took 25. And I thought, 25 what? And I asked her last night what it was. And she said this long medical name. It's some very, very strong prescription kind of. And she had them for something else. And you're supposed to take like one or two a day if you have some symptoms. She took you just, you know, 60 of them was an overdose. And she did die. But she came back. Can you say hallelujah? I mean, my God. And... Um, She saw a tunnel like going the other way where those creatures were at. She said there were hundreds of them. She saw many. She couldn't count how many. Maybe she said it was like two, three hundred. It looked like there was that many. And they had this hooded thing on, this thing, and they were walking people. And at the end of the tunnel was fire. She said she saw flames and fire all the way at the end of it. But then she just said, Lord, I repent. And then God turned her around and looked the other way, and she was walking toward the gate. The gate of heaven, I'd imagine. This is all in the spirit world. I mean, she's out of her body. And she said she could look down and see the people working on her in the hospital. And she was trying to talk to them. Hey, I'm here. And people were crying. And people, you know, people that knew her, they came because they saw the post. And they all came like an emergency situation, which it definitely was. And uh, <laughs> she's a prominent person. She has a lot of friends. You know, she, 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 she's somebody. And, and can you imagine? And saw that, and then the Lord said, I'm not even going to... She felt like if she crossed over into the gate, she would have been there. 
I had a vision like that. I talked about that one time. I was walking toward, and I knew if I went over, you know, I, and I stopped before and I turned back because I had more to do on the earth. I wasn't dying. I didn't die. It was in vision. It was a dream that was a vision. And I saw like as if well, my, it was my time to go toward heaven, which is not now. In fact, let me clarify, it'll be many decades from now. Because I'll live to be very, very uh, on in age. And according to Psalm 91, 16, God will satisfy me with long life because I am his. And my mind has always stayed on him. So with long life, he'll satisfy me. I know that for a fact, so I'm not going anywhere. But I don't know why I had God gave me this vision to stir me up. And I thought, I haven't done enough for the advancement of the kingdom around the world like I'm planning to, like, I, like God has called me to. I haven't done, I haven't done it yet on the level uh, that, that I'm going to do it on. So I thought, no, I can't go. And it seemed like a crazy maneuver. Like you're going toward glory and you turn around and go back. I said, yeah. I turned around. I told the people, I'm not going. I stopped. They looked at me. There were people there. There were angels in the vision. And they looked at me like, the people were like amazed, like they were scared, they were shocked, like how can you do that? And the angels were like kind of neutral, but some looked, they were gazing at me to see what I was going to do. But the people had the emotion, like the thought, like no. And I just turned around, I said, go ahead, do what you want, I'm going. And I turned around and went back, and then I woke up, and then the presence of God, the presence of God was all around me. I said, that was a prophetic vision in my sleep. And I thought, God, I'm asking you for at least one million souls Let's start there. I don't know how many we'll get to, but one million. Give me a million people that I can come with, you know, at least. And by the time we get into media, I have one friend. He got the reports back because he's on this really, really prominent network. And they said they got about five million souls. Reinhard Bonnke had 75 million. Now, when I'm, a police, I'm not an evangelist like him. I'm not, gonna, I'm not having the crusades that have 1.6 million people in attendance, you know. Or more than that, and they had one, they had one over one million decision cards filled out to people to accept Christ at each of those things in Nigeria. And it was a million, then another million, another million, another million. One meeting for each meeting. So obviously I'm not doing that, but hey, somehow through media, through international things, you know, God has to help us get that done. And, and, and I feel, I feel it. I feel it. Let me tell you something. I was with a man of God who's one of the he's one of the premier generals in my view and a lot of people's view. And I don't say that lightly. I don't look at people and call them a general, a real apostle. I don't. In fact, I'm always like uh, throwing off these people that want to use titles. And even it was said, he said, there are many people with titles, but very few leaders, many people with positions, but very few leaders. I, I'm in this thing of the warrior, okay? I, 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 the Holy Ghost is taking me somewhere. And I'll, get, I'll, I'll do a few things in this, and we'll, we'll, we'll make some pronouncements and some things about, about taking, taking a, a vengeance, because something else happened yesterday. I don't know if I'll tell it live or not, but uh, it was quite... Uh, I, I don't know if the Lord wants me to tell it. I'll just think about it as I'm going here and see if I want to share. Because it's very, very startling and very, very... Uh, it's really heavy, and I don't know if, I, if the Lord wants me to share it right now. But, but, uh, and, this, and this happened yes, last night also. All happened, all happened last night. What a day yesterday was. So I had a 21-hour day on Friday, and I had a 20-hour day, I guess you'd say, yesterday. No, more than that, more than that. Maybe 20, 21, 22 hours straight of the move of God and doing so many things. And I don't feel tired at all. In fact, I'm so full of fire right now, I, I don't know, you know. I feel relaxed, I, I, but I don't, feel, I don't feel tired. I was a little tired after the event yesterday. I was like, I thought, am, am I going to be able to stay awake? Then I had another meeting that energized me, and then I, I ended up doing a broadcast after that. Can you imagine? What did I talk about last night? I can't remember. Oh, about the, the, he's the God of surprises. He'll surprise us. He surprised me in the last 48 hours more than I can even tell you. I mean, I am just amazed. God is so good. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. So wonderful. You are. God knows who he made you to be, and he knows what he wants you to get done. He knows it.
In fact, he, <laughs> in fact, I, I would imagine and estimate that he thinks about it more than we do. But now the crossover thing is that we need to, we need to think about it more and be on it more. And I am. In Jesus' mighty name. God, God told Moses, when Moses said, who shall I say? Uh, uh, what am I doing? To tell him I am that I am. You are Moses and I am and we're together. And the scripture says that God made Moses like a God, like a G-O-D to Pharaoh with such power. And yes, he had it. And yes, he was walking in it. But Moses was passionate. See, he went all the way. Abraham was passionate. He became the friend of God. He went all the way. Elijah was jealous. The scripture says in 1 Kings 18, he was jealous for the Lord. And he hated those prophets of Baal, what they were doing and the Jezebel and all that, to the point, and Ahab, to the point that he said, I have to do something about this. And he got stirred up and he killed all those false prophets. And took them off the earth. He deleted them from existence. He deleted that file. What a guy. Elijah. The Lord God of Elijah. Elisha said. My father, my father, I'll never leave you. 2 Kings 2, 2. 2 Kings 2, verse 4. 2, 2 to 4, I think it is. 2 Kings chapter 2. My father, my father, I'll never leave you. Elijah told him, stay here. He said, no, it's too glorious what's happening. I can't go anywhere else. I'm here. And this man who uh, has built uh, the second largest church on planet Earth right now, said he doesn't even feel that successful. And people look at him like he's a phenomenon and an anomaly, and he is. But they, uh, he said, I don't even feel. Because there's so much that God has shown him. He said God has shown him to do so much more. And he says, until I'm really doing all that, I don't feel like I've really done uh, I've done some things, but it doesn't seem to it. Does, it didn't. Occur, it didn't seem to him like it was like it was enough. People would look at him and say, "Boy, you you've done something. You arrived. You're amazing. You're and it's true." But he doesn't feel. Humble and beautiful are the people who are really anointed. And I, I experienced such a realm of honor coming from people. It just was astounding. I didn't know. See, that, that was, it was a surprise from God. I got stirred up to, by the Lord to go to this thing. And then sure enough, when I got there, and I saw the people that weren't, were dishonorable, dishonorable. It's like the glory was so strong, you could just see everybody that was. And all the evil people in the church, those evil preachers, they didn't come. They couldn't come because it was a meeting of the glory. They never came. They weren't there. I wonder, will I see some of those guys around here? These, these old carcasses of Ichabod. Hello. Hello. They weren't there. I was like, good. I, I can avoid the ugliness of looking at them. All I saw was beauty. All I saw. And... Who I call the juniors, not the ones that are famous, like in whatever they're doing or have big churches or whatever, but they're just operating in the thing and, and, and they're serving God. And I was looking at some of them, wondering about a lot of them, you know, because I'm like a watchman. I watched from far. I was telling them they were smiling ear to ear. They couldn't believe it. I was telling them about themselves. Some of them, I was telling them what they put online and how I saw it. And I was describing this scenario and they were laughing like, oh, my God. I said, you don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm watching silently from afar. I'm observing you. I'm praying. I'm like a watchman. God's given me a jurisdiction here. I see what you're doing. They were amazed. A lady came. People wanted to come up and do photo shoots. I'm not the, I wasn't speaking in the meeting. I'm just there. I just appeared. And I have one son in the faith, one of my sons, he says, he says, uh, he says, he said, Prophet Doctor, when you walked in, he said, the glory filled the place. 
He said, when you walked across and they were taking you to your seat, he said the, the atmosphere changed in the whole place and there were thousands of people there. Thousands of people there. In fact, I never saw a crowd on short notice with almost no advertisement. Why? Because this man has broken it in the spirit. He's broken the heavens up. Everywhere he goes, there's massive signs, wonders, miracles, massive crowds. And, he, and, he, and, and, and he's doing a leadership session and he said something so powerful. He said, if you take a church of a thousand and you give it to a man who can only handle a hundred, that church will go down to a hundred. The people, the other 900 will disappear because he doesn't have the level of managing that higher thing. And I said, that's a good point. So he's in the realm of handling millions, you know. Can you imagine? You don't have 100,000 members. How many would like to have in their ministry 100,000 members? Uh, 100,000 members in your church. He doesn't have 100,000 members. Guess what he has? 100,000 seats in a dome that he built that cost umpteen millions, umpteen, what's the number? I don't know. Multiplied millions and millions of dollars. And in the conference, it'll be filled to capacity. It'll be full to capacity. I don't know how they do on Sunday. I guess it's almost full or it's full. Who knows? Probably full every Sunday. And he told me personally, he, he's invited me personally to come as his guest of honor. Can you imagine? And I knew I was supposed to meet him in London. I couldn't get to London. I was, I, I, my schedule didn't permit me to, to do London uh, some months back. And uh, I thought if I have to go to his headquarters, you know, he's a, he's a busy, it's busy. There's like protocols on top of protocols. You know, you don't just walk in and, you know, say, I want to see somebody. Hi, can we do it? It may not happen. And sure enough, God brought him. Listen to what happened. Ten minutes from my doorstep. Ten minutes. In fact, with traffic, it would take 20. Let me just say to be, I'm really, in, I'm a stickler for accuracy. Let me say 15 to 20 minutes driving fast, you know. You're there, maybe not 10 minutes, maybe 15, 15, 16 minutes, say 18 minutes, I don't know. Can you imagine? And there we were. And I walked in, and there were protocols everywhere waiting for me. In fact, they were waiting for me at the gate. His chief assistant was waiting for me at the gate. I didn't know any of this. The word had gone that I was coming. And they're all lined up, and I met this guy. I didn't know who he was. I said, you, what's your name? Oh, I'm pastor, and he said his name. I was like, wow, where are you from? Uh, yeah, he told me, you know, he's from the headquarters over there, not from here. I was like, oh. And he's smiling at me, and I thought, what's going on here? Then I get to the front. Then all the juniors were there. I call, no, I, I don't want to be funny. It's a, I have to get a better name for it. What, what, what can I, I have to think of a better name? Uh, I'll, I'll get it. A really honorable, you know, junior sounds a bit, you know, sounds like lesser. Up and coming, you know, powerful people. And I know them and they know me well. And, I, and, and they, they, they were so honoring to me. I couldn't believe it. I could, I'll tell you, I, I couldn't believe it. I felt like I, was, like I was in another world. I said, is this really happening? You and you and you and you and you. You're coming to embrace me and love me. Really? Really? And I felt like that to them. And I spoke such words of affirmation over them. They were touched to the depths of their soul, to the depths of their spirit. It went into them. Boom. And it was like, we are connected. We are the body of Christ. It was absolutely astounding to me. And it may not sound like a big deal to somebody, but you, you don't know the realm of where I'm, the, 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 the track record of time and history and people and situations. And, all. And, and to see that happen just like that, I was like, oh, my God. And there were other people there that uh, uh, another situation that's even like on a higher, even a higher level than that. And I'm just going to watch and see how that plays out. Oh, and I'm talking about people here, not from somewhere. Else. And then you see the, then you see the cold fish, you know, some of these guys, they'd be right next to you and they won't look at you. I said, I got you, man. I got you, man. 
I got you. I, mar I got the mark on you. People telling me like, oh, these guys are praying and they love you. I thought, no, they don't. I don't believe it. And sure enough, it's true. And then some people come, you watch how some people come to embrace you and that there's a connection and other people just like. <laughs> and the VIP protocol who put a whole protocol thing together. I was amazed that this lady did it. I was amazed. If you ever seen this message, dear, I applaud you. I honor you. I salute you. I was surprised. I was amazed. What gifting I'm seeing happening with all of you. Oh, my, my, my. Jesus, it's so glorious. So guess what? With all the warfare, get, and, and these are people that have been through a lot of warfare. Yeah. We all have, right? I'm talking to the general now. Warfare. It's, 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 in, it's, it's embroidered into my names like these, uh, like my initials here, PTM4. I don't know why they did it sideways. You see that? And this is spelled B-U Bulgari. <laughs> you might know this designer watch. Okay, this is very... Um, very uh, PTM. So it's like it, it, it's 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 embroidered, you know. Warfare, being a warrior. <laughs> Woo, Lord! I was amazed. Let me tell you. So someone that was like winning awards now, super top business person, they came running over to me and stood in front of me like, "Hi." They want to do like a photo shoot. They got the other people, come, come. And it wouldn't stop. It's just like people lining up everywhere. This has happened many times. This really happens all the time uh, at, at events. I'll be standing outside. I almost feel like a little bit nervous because I thought I'm not the speaker. I just came to visit and y'all like lining up to honor me and talk to me and be with me and take photos and give me your contact. I'm like, hey, uh, wow, you know, let's, uh, and it happened again. But the people that were doing it, was, it was amazing. So, okay, I was saying that this, this, this uh, VIP protocol director extraordinaire was saying like, you know, this man of God, he's so precious, you know. And these other people, they're very, they're, they're very snooty and smug. I thought, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you, 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 you see that? And I saw some of that. <laughs> some of you, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this or not. Let me move along here. But some of you uh, 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 have heard me tell a story about a real, like, bad scenario that happened with a certain preacher who calls himself Apostle, you know. But he turned up, and he was there. Guess what? He couldn't look at me. He couldn't even say hello. In the program that goes by initials starting with MBWA, you know that one? All right, I got I to gotta be careful. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Good, good. It's coded language. Is that how you spell it? MBWA.com. .org. .tv. Is that a name or something? I was like, really? But it's so good how God could show you everything. The good, bad, and the ugly, and the in-between. Say amen. Discernment and sight has everything to do with your success. Discernment and sight has everything to do with who you connect with and who you don't connect with. And if you think everybody's going to love you, you're very sorely mistaken. In fact, if you don't have any haters, I wonder if you're anointed. <laughs> if you want, and, and this woman of God that came back from the other world, that came back from the dead, can you imagine? She said, and I, I didn't know. I didn't have any communication. Like, like in the natural, you don't know if you're going to see the next thing, R.I.P., you know, the R.I.P. thing, because she did die. But when I saw that thing, I prayed. I said, no. And I didn't shout and start screaming and go all around. Da, 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 da. I just said, no, that's not the case. She's not, this is not going to get her in Jesus' name. And I wrote this message like, hey, dear, don't do that. It's not too big for God. Whatever's going on, God will deliver you. And then the next line I wrote, call me. 
The last night she called. Can you imagine? Can we lift our hands for that life? A calling of God, the fire of God is upon her. And if you could hear, I should play, I, I have a recording, I should play some of her voice so you could hear how, how wonderful her voice is. She sounds like, like she should be on television or in movies or on the radio. She has that kind of voice with the British accent and the whole thing, and very, very clear. And she didn't sound like anything had happened to her because God touched her. That's the kind of thing we need to see happening all the time. But I feel, I feel this thing about taking a warring posture and to speak against certain things because I'm seeing some. I saw something very unusual happen last night. I really don't know if I should say it because it's really, people will get scared. If I tell you what happened, people will get scared. I, Y'all, 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 y'all would get scared if I told you. I may not, I may not tell. I mean, genuinely scared. You, you'd, be de- you'd be genuinely terrified. Something the devil tried to do. And I watched it happen right in front of my eyes. Anyway, I, I don't I, no, Let me know. So, Write this down. The realm of victory is in the world that is is in the realm of the spirit. The realm of victory is in the realm of the spirit. If you have it there, everything happens. Like I, I noticed too, with this servant of God that I was with, he he's totally broken through in the spirit. He's there. He lives there. He comes out. It's there. They they worship and they do this whole thing, and. Uh, his daughter will sing and he'll play the instrument to have this high level of worship and the glory comes and miracles start happening. And he'll just call miracles like miracles are happening and people just come running up there, healed of every kind of thing. That, that's all in the realm of the spirit. And that's the person that builds a huge, 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 huge ministry that everybody marvels at. And all these guys that are preachers that like have positions or titles, that they take titles to themselves, they would just love to uh, try to ha- get to that certain level, but they, they'll never get there because that's not the way you get there. It's all in the realm of the spirit. Victory is in the realm of the spirit. Being on top is in the realm of the spirit. It has nothing to do with the natural. The natural, even the natural order of things that are glorious follow the victory in the realm of the spirit. If you don't have that first, I was talking to a man of God, and uh, it was a real divine connection. Many divine connections and many events will be coming up that I'll be doing. And I'm not picking everybody. I'm just picking the real hot ones that I feel the strongest about. One man of God said to me, I know who you are, and I know what you do. And he said, I'm going to arrange a very big meeting for you. And I'd be thrilled to do it. I said, great, do it. Okay. Let's see what happens. But there are others that I felt more. It was just a a, a Holy Ghost manifestation when we met and talked. There's something to do with them that we need to do. So some things we need to do with them. So um, I met this man of God, and and he's a very interesting guy. He's somewhere that I'm very interested to go to. And in fact, I kept feeling the urgency like the Lord kept See, see, for me, it would be a little hard to schedule it so quick, but the Lord kept telling me, like, now, 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 don't wait. I feel it now. I thought, it, I thought about it again this morning. I'm going to call him and say, we need to do this right away. And he, now, what, what, here's what I want to tell you. I want to teach you something here. I don't want to just talk about what I'm doing. But there's a principle. He developed something that's from heaven. It's so powerful. It's so creative. It's so brilliant. And, and another man of God who was here, he was here last, uh, visiting with us in the last meeting. And uh, he, he designed something and he told someone about it. And someone went and got a contract for $19 billion with the idea that he told them about. And I thought, oh, you should listen. Well, now, now I have to pray that God seals it. He gave me that one idea. He'll give you another one. And he's under the prophetic grace now with us. I'm praying for him. And... Uh, 
he, he's going to break through with something of his own. But he told some secrets to someone, and sure enough, it got, and uh, they got a contract for $19 billion with the ideas that God gave him. Can you imagine? He got nothing. So you got to be, you got to, and if I told you who it was, you'd be like, oh my God, but I can't say, I can't say names. So, uh, this, this man of God got this idea and he, 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 he made it, he, he, he meant well, but it was, it turned out to be a mistake and he saw it, but maybe not. Some things you do that seem like a mistake to you was a learning experience. Maybe you had to walk through that. Write that down. Some mistakes, things that seem to be mistakes, I, and I don't advocate that. I'm into success. I'm into not missing it. I'm into getting a good result. I don't want people to waste their time making a mistake. But sometimes a mistake happens and you learn so much from it. So now here's the key now. Here's the wisdom. Don't do it again. Number one, which I've, I've learned a lot of lessons along the journey. Some things I'll look at three times before I do it again. I prophesied a major word in the capital city that split the heavens open, that God came and spoke. And the person, where, the place where it was turned up and wouldn't even look at me because they're doing some evil things behind their back. And the judgment came upon them. They're into all kinds of foolishness. I mean, I mean, if I tell you, and I had people come to tell me, you know, I'm sitting in a coffee shop about to have a meeting, a business meeting with a real, real important, uh, a very high level thing. And I'm waiting for them to come. They, you know, I arrived first a few minutes ago because I, I like to be there on time for a meeting. So I was there and I'm having a coffee. And sure enough, here comes this, this uh, messenger I, I'd call, I'd call a, a, a pastor and told me the whole thing about what's going on. I'm just like laughing. It's like, it's like a comedy, it's like a comedy act or a movie. I'm just like getting all the intel on things and they're telling me and then this happened and this happened and that happened. It was all bad. I said, these people have opposed God and they've opposed the prophet. They've opposed the prophet and they've opposed the move of God. So guess what? The result is judgment. And the next thing the Lord said, those that oppose will fall down and not get up. And the not getting up part keeps happening to certain people. They try to get up, but they keep falling again. They can't get up. They can't stand up. So you, you think that's an accident? No, it's not an accident. I have to say something there to what I said I was going to deal with in the message, and I will, I'll, get to, I'll get to some of it. I, don't, I won't finish it today, but... The thing is, we need to absolutely pulverize and destroy the works of the enemy. And people that are evil and mean and off and competitive and hurtful and hateful. Uh, Isaiah 41, 11 fixes them. He said, those that hate you will become ashamed and disgraced. Well, that's how I just saw that. I saw a result of the person that happened to yesterday. I saw them. Maybe. And I had already known it happened, but I didn't know I'd see them. And sure enough... I'm trying to look, I'm trying to be nice, I'm smiling that way, you know, there's other people there, and they never even looked my way. I thought, I got you, I got you, bro, I got you. As guilty as sin you are. You went all up behind my back talking with uh, what Jesus called the outside dogs. You know, there's a word for it in Swahili. Did all your <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I, <laughs> guess what? How do you say, me, I don't care? I don't care. Do I care? Do I look like I care? That's your problem. Carry on with your folly, you'll suffer more, you know. I, there's one uh, lady who said she's a woman of God who started cursing at me one time. I, I told the story a little bit before. And, uh, and the Lord said, I'm taking her legacy away from her. My judgment will come upon her because of this thing that she's done. I was shocked. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel, uh, you know, angered or whatever. I didn't feel like, I, I was really shocked. I didn't have an emotion of feeling hurt or, or angry or bitter. I, I, felt, I was just more shocked than anything. How could you do that? I helped you. I was kind to you. You know, I'm a servant of God. And then you, you know, I don't know who twisted your head up. And, um. And then I see the, the post later on with this person. Then I just deleted it and blocked. 
after that. But I saw the result. They start complaining. Everything's going wrong, you know, within some days after all that. I thought, oh, boy. In fact, this woman of God that came back from the dead that I had prayed for, that happened this week, the one I was just talking about. She said to me, she said, some lady got stirred up against her and started doing all kinds of nonsense. And then people came to her later and said, did you hear about so-and-so? The lady, that lady, she said, no, I, don't, I, don't, I hadn't even thought about it. She said, well, she died. She just died. She's gone. And she said, I didn't feel bad. I didn't pray against her. I didn't think anything of it. I, in fact, I said I felt like, like God be merciful to her. She, what is she doing? She's insane. Why would she do that against me, you know? I, I feel like that. You think like what you get, you feel more puzzled than anything, you know what I mean? Like why? You know the devil's crazy, but why does a person have to be crazy? You feel like, oh Lord. You know, Jesus even said, forgive them for they know not what they do. But I'm telling you, the heavenly glory brings change to a society. The heavenly glory of God will bring change to situations, and that's what the devil's the most afraid of. Lord, what if I were to tell what happened last night? I don't know. I don't think I can. <laughs> Part of the reason is I don't want to advertise for the devil. But he did something really stupid. It was bad. Will I tell it privately? I don't know. I may not either. I might. I might. I might. I definitely don't want to advertise for him. But it was, it was supernatural evil that was sent, you know. And happened. It, did, it did something. It didn't touch me, but it happened. It touched, it, something happened. And it was very directed. So I thought, that's very interesting. I'm having a visitation from heaven uh, this week, you know. And then sure enough, when I just leave them and they've, they've gone on their private jets to fly out and back to their, back to their city to be in church all day today, uh, to get back yesterday, Saturday, and I thought, they, they've gone up. We finished everything. And then the devil, the devil just sent like something, you know, to try to kill, steal, a, to try to kill, you know. I hate to allude to it and not tell the details, but anyway, maybe I will. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. I, I, I don't feel released to say it right now. But uh, it was something. So I thought, this is too, it's too evil. It's too specific. But that's also a sign, you know, of what the great thing that's about, the great things that are about to happen. So, Lord, I just declare right now over every witch, every occultic worker, every demonic agent, any demons <clears throat> everywhere in the, in, in, that are out there around, they, they're being destroyed. Their works are being destroyed. They can't get anything done. They want to try to devise something or do something, but it just they 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 just they just can't do it. They just can't succeed because there are angels all around them. They're all around us. And I curse right now in the name of I want to say we because we're we're heavenly. You know, we have the angels, you know, the Holy Ghost, me and him. You know what I mean? I don't want to just say me. And I'm singling myself out like and some people, somebody might think, why would you speak that? Why would you speak so harshly about that? No, I'm talking about those that mean to kill you. So let's say in the realm of self-defense, you want to be killed or do you want to, or you want to knock somebody out that they can't operate? Which, which is better? Why did they make the Second Amendment in America? To, to defend yourself really against a tyrannical government. That's kind of scary. You think, I, I, I have weapons and now I don't carry them, but if people that would carry weapons to say that they're not, they're not defending themselves from criminals, which is that, that's what you would think it is, but, but from a tyrannical government. Will, will it ever come to that? It might. Look at the way things are going in America. 
The founding fathers put that in there. You have the right to bear arms, which means guns, you know, weapons. To defend yourself against a t- tyrannical government. Did they prophetically see our generation? What the devil's trying to set up with all kinds of systems to attack humanity, to destroy economies, to put other things in place, to put people down. Did did they foresee that 300 years ago? Maybe. You you hear the story about someone broke in and they were going to rape, kill, and murder somebody, but they had... But they had guns in the club. <laughs> they came out. They came out and blasted them into the next life. I actually saw one on video. It was really scary. This guy was trying to break in the door to attack the family. You know, and he had a girlfriend. The girlfriend went into the parents, her, her parents' house. And this guy was kicking the door. And he actually got the door open and went in. They were telling him, hey, stop. And one said, I'm armed. You know, the father said, I'm armed. And the kid, he kept crazy. Kept, he kicked in, he was going in, and the guy shot him dead right there. Boom, 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 boom. And it's on video. That's rolling around on Instagram or wherever I saw it, you know. Usually I see those things. I put not interested or hide, and they ask you for a reason. This makes me feel very uncomfortable. I'm like, yeah, that's the one. Let me click that. You ever click that one? This makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not into watching lions eat apart the, the intestines or the body parts of another animal. I really, lions to me, leave the lion with his nice hair. He's a symbol of Simba, lion of the tribe of Judah. Let, 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 let's leave the imagery there. The lion lays down with the lamb and then they make these, uh, these, these uh, graphics, you know, memes, you know, the big lion over the city of Jerusalem with the golden dome and the, the crown on his head. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. But if you want to look at a lion in action on a daily basis, they're tearing a, 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 another animal alive, eating it alive while it's screaming and suffering. Arr, you know, wildebeest and what do you call them? Water buffaloes or whatever they catch, you know, different animals. I don't want to see that. And then people's trying to film monkeys when a monkey goes up and he's trying to, you know, have sex with the other monkey. Would you stop posting that stuff, you heathens? You think we want to look at that? Oh, that's, you know. I saw one lady from Kiambu, a Kikuyu lady, yeah? Young lady, I don't know what's wrong with her. Maybe she's possessed or what. And, And all her stuff on her page were gory videos. One they had on video, a guy came in to rob a store and there was a security guard there and he shot and the guy was walking toward him and he had a gun and the guy had a robber came in with a gun and the guy just shot one shot. Boom. It hit the guy in the neck. See, see, I got to stop. I, I shouldn't talk about this, but it's just, it's just so it's so intriguing. But I, I have to switch it up. So I, I don't want to be get guilty of the same thing, but it's just let me just tell him shot the guy in the neck. And one bullet hit him right in the jugular, you know, or the, or the big artery. And the, and the blood was gushing as he started to walk. Pew, 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 flying through the air and filling the floor with a whole line of blood. And he got, he tried to get out. He walked out through the door and he just collapsed in the door. He was already dead because he got hit. That was the kill shot. Can you imagine? And this lady, she plays that video. Then there's another video. I said, something's very evil about this woman. Let me block her out. All right. And I'll, I'll end the discussion there. Of the, of the storytelling on that there. And I said, I, I don't want to see this kind of stuff. That's a very dark thing in somebody that they would like enjoy watching those kind of clips of videos. One more, and then I'm done. The ones where they were beheading people in the Middle East, you know, they take a knife and just cut the head. Live on video, the video, I saw those videos. Then a pastor who I had some, you know, some issues with. And he was a friend at one point, but now I don't, you know, anyway. And he sent me this video of this this guy in the Middle East, like, you know, chopping the heads off of people, you know, a bunch of people. And I wrote him back, why would you send this to me? What was, what were you thinking about, you know, that I would... 
I would want to watch something like this. And you know, the thing about those things, you, you, when you see it, you, you know, you ever heard the statement, when you see it, you can't unsee it? So you're giving me more work to do on my mind. Which brings me to a good point. All right, I'm done. I don't know why. I got to say that. But maybe, actually, I'm teaching as a, as, a, as a pastor, as a leader, okay? As a prophet. And I'm under the teaching grace here. So, and the prophetic anointing. So I need to maybe say this because you've seen things like this. You need to get them out of your mind. So let me, since I mentioned that, let me give you the remedy. Is that okay? That's probably why the Lord had me go into that anyway, I'm sure. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. Write it down. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. Talk about casting down vain imaginations, every thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ, which is what? Victory, you know, good living. And then Philippians, write this down, Philippians 4, verse 8. What things should I focus on? Things that are just honest or good report, there be any virtue, there be any praise, stick on these things, right? The positive. Romans 8, 28, another one. I love it. All things work together for good, not bad, to those that are called of God and called according, uh, uh, walking according to his purpose, called according to his purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11 says what? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to prosper you and give you a great destination, or what, what the one verse uh, version calls it, the expected end. I like expected end because if you if you're walking in faith and living the the right way in the in the ways of God, you should expect to be blessed. You should expect to be victorious. Hello, you should expect <coughs> to uh, succeed and prosper. So I bind every attack against the mind. Anything you've experienced, and this is what I prayed over this woman of God last night. Everything that happened that drove her to the point of, of having despair to even want to take her own life. No, 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 no. And I know it's bad, and I, and I feel for her. I don't, you know, I don't feel. It, it definitely wasn't a good move, but she just got pushed to that point, you know. And it will never happen again because now she knows. And she said, it's because of the out-of-body experience of what I saw when I was out of my body will stay with me. I said, that'll stay with you and keep you forever. You could never have such a problem again after having an experience like that. So no matter what happens, there's always a good remedy. That was the remedy for her, that she lives long and prospers and gets her assignment fulfilled and would never cave in to any kind of problem. Imagine you, you, you do the physical act of committing suicide, die, leave your body, and then God sends you back. And I had prayed in a very calm voice. I didn't pray loud. I said, no, this is not good. This, is, this will not happen. This will not succeed. And I just felt I'll be hearing from her. Sure enough, last night she called. Totally in her right mind, totally healthy and healed completely uh, touched by God. So the devil can try to throw his shots, but we, we have the victory over him. Luke 10, 19, another scripture says what? He gives us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and to crush them down under our feet. And he said, he said nothing shall... Nothing shall by any means hurt us. Say a big amen. This book right here has, has it all. This is our victory. What's in here? This is what we need to use. I heard, I heard another man of God, I just kind of, I don't watch them much, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little interested to look at them more. I'm going to start listening to their messages. I, I know what they do, and I know who they are, huge. 
But uh, the associate was up speaking. He sounds just like his mentor. He sounds like the Papa Apostle. Sounds exactly like him. Same voice, same tonality, same way of preaching. Sounds like it's the old man in, another, in a younger man's body. You know, it's the same thing. They speak the same way. They say the same thing. The inflection, the tone, the way they... And I thought, this guy... But he started to say, you see us. This is what we're about right here. This word. I thought, I love that. Yeah. He said, we're living according to the word. Any success you see we have, anything we're doing, anything that's happening around here, any result. He said, we have energy. We're healed. We're, we're, we're healthy and strong. We're, we're, we're getting a lot done. It's because of the word. He didn't just say, well, it's the touch. He didn't even say it's the touch of the Holy Ghost, which some people would go on and say that also. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He just said the word, the word, the word, the word. I, I, I tell you that. And peep, the, peep, the result. You see, what I've, been, what I've been saying prophetically for many months, and you've heard me say this, that I'm, I'm longing to see a generation of ch- people in churches here, here in this land and everywhere else to begin to teach the word. Have you heard me say that a lot? How many have heard me say that at least five times? Maybe 10, maybe 20. Lift your hand. I've said it how many times? I've probably said it a hundred times, yeah? You've heard me say it, yes? Yes or yes? The, the answer to the dilemma of the crooked, corrupt society and the crooked, corrupt church and all kinds of nonsense is the word of God. And not to shout this old, old kind of Pentecostal, because like in Brooklyn, New York, I remember there was one Bishop Roy E. Brown, Bishop Roy Brown, he, he's gone to heaven. And I used to be in meetings with him, and he'd tell all these old Bible stories, and he'd name the names of Penina and the other one, the one. I always, felt it was, I always thought it was kind of like, why are, you, why are you going on and on about the story of this one? Where was the Penina? People like to use that name in Kenya. Penina, they named their kids Penina, Bible name. I, don't, I wouldn't name a kid that. Penina, what kind of name is that? Yo, Pen. Yo, Pen. Get me a pen. Yo, P-E-N. Yo, Nina. Yo, uh, 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 Nah. Nah at the end, you know. What do you call her for short? Very prominent woman of God is Becky, who's the wife of the apostle. But I like the name Rebecca. I like R-E-B-E-K-K-A-H or C-C-A-H, however you're going to spell it. I really love that name, but the, the short part of it, I don't like very much. You know what name I like, too, is Isabel. I love Isabel. With two S's and two B's. I double S, A double B, E double L, E. I love that name. You know, if I had a kid like that, I'd call him, I'd call him Izzy. Yo, Izzy. I like Izzy. Izzy sounds nice. Doesn't it sound nice? Doesn't Izzy have a nice ring to it? Izzy. Hey, Izzy. Oh, it's me. I'm coming. <laughs> Izzy, I like it, but you know the, the short for Rebecca, I don't know any of that stuff. But Isabel, I love that word, Isabel. With two S's, two B's, and two L's. I double S, A double B, E double L, E. You can even make a rap song out of it. I double S, A double B, E double L, E. Rebecca, I like it spelled with two K's. I don't know if you could do that. You, people try to do it with two C's. I, I don't know how it was in the Bible. I, was, it two, was, it, was it two K's or two C's? I don't remember. Anyway. The Word is what gives life. And what you teach about in the Word is important. The biggest idiot who ever was is Lucifer. He started out beautiful, but ended up an idiot. Why? Because of his rebellion against God. Can I say something a real bit strong? If you're not zealously and jealously pursuing what Jehovah wants, you're also a rebel. I'm talking to everybody. I'll, I'll speak to myself. You know, like this woman of God that got out of her body and had died by her own hand because she was so, in so such despair. When she was out in the spirit, she said, I, the Lord gave her a chance to repent. And she yelled out, I repent of this of trying to take my life. Forgive me, Lord. 
Instantly she was free. The Lord forgave her right there. Repentance is not a word you should ever be scared of or ashamed of. You should be quick, quick to adopt it. It means to change your mind and recognize the error, uh, some error you're in. And you, you're going to get out of it right now. Say a big amen. I repent. Any streak of rebellion in me, I repent of it. Let's lift our hands. Anything that's contrary to the move of God, lift your hands, tell them, I repent. I get it out of me. Anything that's in me that's of the devil, anything that was put in me from the evil world, anything by sin or corruption or environment or, or demons or evil in any way, get it out of me, take it out of me. In Jesus' name, the glory was so strong. The glory was so strong in this, in this uh, meeting. I, I, uh, a lot of people came to testify that things were coming out of them. Nobody had gone up to them personally and said, you know, I see this and I'm going to prophesy and I'm going to tell you. It just happened in the atmosphere. Why? Because the glory of heaven showed up. One guy was really funny. You know me, I started to laugh when I heard this one. Because if you know me, I, I think monkeys are amazing little creatures. We don't have any in New York. We don't have any in America. So when I see one, I go, whew, where am I at? This is exotic. I'm somewhere else. You know, it's like you're in a fantasy land. I was walking uh, from my, my, my hotel suite down to, the, down to the ocean to go to the lunch buffet. And I'm walking and I'm looking down at my phone, which I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, I got a sense of some creature, some, some animate thing. You know, I could just feel in the spirit. I'm looking like this, and all of a sudden, I just stopped. I, I put my phone in, in my pocket, and I just looked, and there's like six or seven or eight monkeys just sitting right there looking at me. Sitting on the grass, and they're just looking at me like this. I was like, where am I at? Really? And one was a different color. Some of them were like grayish, dark, you know. One was a light brown, and I noticed him. He was a weird, he was a weird one. He, probably the other monkeys, you know, know he's a, either he's a prince or, you know, he's a higher up echelon guy because he has very light brown fur. He was the only one that had that. The others were a different color. But he's in the same species of them. But I don't know what happened in the DNA Maybe he was the royal amongst them. You know what I mean? He was the royal. He was in the royal lineage of the monkey lion. I don't know. And he had this other color fur. So and he was a rambunctious little devil. So I looked at him and I, I, I waved my hand at him like this. I went, hey, you. You know what he did? He ran right at me and he hit me on the leg as he was running by. <laughs> I tell you, little devil. I, I don't know if I have to get in my kung fu stance, you know. Here, I'm going to stand here like, all right, yow, pew. And they're all there. So, anyway, I, 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 to me, it's amazing. Okay, so this guy said that the visitation of God touched him there. And he said he saw things coming out of him like monkeys. He said there were monkeys in the spirit. Monkeys were coming out of his body and leaving him. Demons. I thought, what an analogy. It's like a demon, a monkey. Now they're monkey demons, you know. And he was getting delivered. And all these things were coming out of him. And he said they, he, he saw in the spirit, they, he said they were, they, they were monkey looking things. Lift your hands to everything that's like, all these demonic, any demonic thing of any kind, it comes out of me. Anything that tried to call sick, cause sickness, anything that attacks my physical health, anything that affects my well-being, anything in the atmosphere, anything spoken against me, anything ever ingested somewhere that had something wrong with it, anything of any environment in any way, shape, or form that's evil, dark, from the other world, a result of wrong connection, wrong environment, wrong association, or just things that were thrown against us, I break them right now and cast them out in Jesus' name, and they leave us from today. They'll never be there again. And I command perfect health, perfect health and healing, 
be upon every person, myself first and you, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Father God, fix everything that's ailing in us, anything wrong with us in any way, shape, or form. Break that thing out of us today in Jesus' name and let it never be there again for the rest of our days. Any weakness, tiredness, sickness that we had in any way, shape, or form was the last time we'll ever have it in Jesus' name. Anything that afflicted you in the evil world, that afflicted you and affected you adversely in any way, that will be the last time that ever happens in Jesus' name. Say a big amen. Amen. You know this statement when you're talking about finances, I'll never be broke another day in my life. The last broke day you had will be the last broke day you'll ever have. Say amen. That's good too. But today I'm somewhere in this thing about victory in the world of the spirit. And God says, God spoke to me this morning and said, the warrior needs to rise up in people. People are too lax. I repent. Say, I repent. I say, I was doing this last Sunday. I like this. I might, I'm not going to say this every week or every day, but, or I might, if the Lord deems it necessary to say, I repent. In any way, being slack concerning his promises, calm when I should be stirred up, lazy in any way when I should have been like pushing myself. Last night I was sitting somewhere and I was so, I was so stuck to the seat because I was physically tired. Yesterday afternoon, it was the af- afternoon actually. And I thought there's, some, there's something I need to do and I need to do it right now. And I rebuked myself. I said, get up. You got to get up and move. You got to go there. You know, I wanted to sit where I was, but I had something to do that had a time frame attached to it. And I had to do it right then. So I just spoke to myself. I spoke to myself. I said, get up. You get up and just go. You have to go now. I told myself that. Why? Because I'm in charge of my physical body. Can you say amen? The same way it's like that. You have a thought, then you do something. You think it's just natural? No. You think it's just like, uh, uh, by the way? No. The command headquarters here, all right, told the other parts of the body what to do. Okay? I want to stretch my leg like that. I just did it. Why? Because I thought of it. Imagine that God wired this whole thing together. Is that too amazing? We take it so, so lightly. Things that God does and he created, and we, we take them like they're just granted, like we take them for granted. Do you know I'm amazed at that right now? That I could just do this right here because I'm just thinking it, and then it, my muscles are moving like that, and I'm moving like that because what? And you, you just say, well, that's just how it is. No, there's a reason why it's like that. What if you didn't have the command center? How would you do anything? And it's the same principle that carries over from the natural soul and the spiritual. Everything that you speak to and you command it to be, it's going to happen. Say amen. And if you, if you don't speak to it, you don't do anything about it, how's it going to happen? And we just leave things the way they are. Well, that's how it is, you know. That's just how it is. That's just the way people are. And they say very silly statements like, oh, people are different. Yeah. No, you're different, and you're, 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 you're on the lower end of silly. You're on the lower end of uh, intellectualism. You don't have any. You're really in the realm of silliness because you, you want to defend a person being untoward, evil, rebellious, or idiotic, or whatever. You, you, you just say, oh, people are different, like, like that's okay. In my world, it's not okay. And I've shouted at a lot of people that. I said, don't ever say that to me, people are different. I've cut relationships over that statement. You know that? You don't know that about me. I've, I, I had one person, I was talking to them, and they were going on and on with all these colloquial expressions, defending, you know, the devil. Like, this is how it is. That's how people are. We know that, man. We know it's like that. People are different and all that kind of stuff. I thought, you know what? And I, I didn't say anything. I was like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I didn't tell them I was done. I didn't say anything. I smiled, okay? And that was the end of that. And they wanted an opportunity with me, but they didn't get it. I thought, you're so full of that stuff. How long is it going to take me 
to give the laxative, the, the enema, the what, the spiritual uh, flushing of all that from the mind. You know, I don't have time for all that. I don't have time to do all that. You got to come ready made. And then we train you from there. A dear friend of mine, a great general in the kingdom, he says, he says, uh, everybody needs training. Boy, that's the truth. Even if someone's skilled in an area, they still need to be trained on how to work the, the thing with you or in a better way, like just from a, a neutral, generic point of view, not just because of your particular preference on something, but there's a better way to do it. So you need to get into that realm of training. And uh, I'm like, wow, we could call that the palace protocol, the protocols. I want to get back to this man of God I was speaking about. And I didn't finish the story. He got this gift. I was talking about the mistake, but sometimes the mistake, you feel like it's a mistake. You go, ah, oh, that wasn't good. Uh, but you had to do it to know people how they are. So here's what he did. He took his whole system and packaged it a little bit and had events and told the quote unquote city fathers. I thought city morons. Yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it morons, deserve no respect, figureheads in the church. Huh? Are you getting me? City fathers. And, and I said, so I started laughing because I knew what he was going to say. What's the result? Oh, they hated it. They tried to shut me down. They tried to throw me off. They tried to hurt me and whatever. I said, so they attack you. So these are servants of God, yeah? Yeah. Uh, these are servants of God, yeah? Are you kidding me? These are servants of God, yeah? No, they're not. Are you all out there or are you gone home? Are you still alive? Yes. You still breathing? I don't know. I'm just trying to... Someone check the pulse of the person next to you if they look too comatose. You wonder... Are you like my friend who took a trip to heaven and back? Are you... I have to call you back or what? You know, come back. Wake up. And I thought, bro, man of God, you, you have, and I didn't get to say all that I was thinking, but I, I would just say more, and I said something, something. But he has something that's so amazing. Guess what? I want all of it. I want all of what he has. He's going to teach me all of that. He's going to train our people. You're going to be seeing him. All you people in my organization, you're going to be seeing him. He's going to bring the training. I'm going to, I'll put him on television if I have to. Or I'll, or I'll have it in a way that we do it through the webinar thing and have it all through all our connected people as we grow the works around the earth further and train the people on how to do. And all this thing that's so beneficial for the church, that's such a brilliant thing from heaven, but these people in the church hated him. I'm like, yeah, you see what spirit they're of. So here's what I said. Guess what I said. You want to know what I said? You, you want to know what I said? And I said it in about 30 seconds. Give the prophecy in 30 seconds or less. I did it. I said, lift your hands, son. This, and this is a prominent guy. I shouldn't be talking to him like that. I just met him two, five minutes before that. In fact, he was the head of the protocol for the man of God. He, read, he was like a step above the VIP protocol people. He was the, manag the manager of the whole thing, putting it all together, and he knows how to do it. The system that they had in place on the ground, I, I've, never, I've never seen a meeting like that. And I didn't get all into it. I kind of was walking through it because I was a VIP. You know, they brought me in and all that, and I went up to the, the VIP, you know, all the, uh, with, the, with the leaders. And I was just observing it and seeing it and going, wow, 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 look at this. This is so excellent. But I didn't get into the inner workings of it. I'll, I'll do that in the coming days. I want to know how it all works. And we're going to use all of those wisdoms and the, the people that are doing all that. They'll be operating with us. Oh, my. And I was, I was so amazed. And uh, here's what the Lord said. I had just met him. In fact, he came up. They, uh, another one of the protocols brought him to me and said, this is the, the head of the protocol and he's been wanting to meet you. Here he is and he's standing there smiling. He looked like the most sweetheart of a guy, humble guy, amazing guy. Uh, uh, and I, I think he's a Kenyan. I, don't th I think he's a Kenyan. Yeah. I'll find out. I think he is. 
I, I could perceive that. And he's here with these local people. If he's Nigerian, I don't know. I, to, yet to, to, be, to be determined, to be discovered, I'm not sure. But I thought, you bring brilliance to people and they trash it. It's like pearls before the swine. So are they swines? <laughs> are they virile hogs? Are they warthogs? You call them warthogs? Warthogs. You're saying it wrong. It's warthog. Hog by itself is a pig. They're like an offspring of the pig, but they have the horns, you know? It's an H-O-G. So really, in reality, I, I'll, I'll honor the way you say it, No, because I think it's cute when I hear people say it. You can't, if you're in Kenya, you can't say warthog. You can't say it. Try to say it. You can't. If I put you on the spot, it's warthog. You can't say warthog. You won't do it. If I, tr if I teach you for a half an hour, say warthog. You'd be warthog. Because that's the way you learned it. Warthog. You can't say warthog. But I call the warthog because it's like warthog. It's a hog. It's a hog. I heard a joke by a little nine-year-old girl. She wrote a joke. She said, what's a pig's favorite ice cream? And uh, Johnny Carson told this on his show years ago. What's a, pig what's a pig's favorite? A little nine-year-old girl came up with this joke. She wrote it. What's a pig's favorite ice cream? And she said, Hagen dazs <laughs> Hagen dazs is H-A-A-G-E-N, then hyphen D-A-Z. It's a German word, yeah? But she saw hog in that. You get it? What's a pig's favorite ice cream? Hagen dazs why? Because they, they're hogs. So I thought, uh, is this like swine? Is this Jesus' words being fulfilled? Are you kidding? Lift your hand and say, Lord, get it all out of me. Anything wrong. How could somebody hate a brilliant, beautiful guy? He's not an arrogant guy. He's not competitive. He had a humble spirit. He's real genuine. He had the glow in his eyes and his face. He's a real man of God. I thought a real man of God shows up with the presence of God, the gift of God, the, the anointing and something brilliant and people in the church hate it. I brought it, you know, we had a meeting and I like explained it all to the city fathers and the next thing you know, they want to shut him out. They attacked him. They persecuted him to try to destroy him. He was telling me that. I said, what? Now, I'm not surprised because I know these people. Somebody said, we know them. I know you all like to say that too. If you say, hey, I was in uh, Belindi in the coast in a meeting, a place was full of people with no advertisement. If every place was just full. I was amazed at how many people were there. I actually came from the spa and the beach and the pool and the what. I was like triple covered in ocean seawater, I guess chlorine from the pool and oil from the spa and whatever and then and I, the steam room, I was like coat, and I had my, uh, my, my track uh, suit on, and I was coming in, I thought I'm gonna just go and see what's going on here, and I walked in, and I preached a message, I thought it was about an hour long, the more, one of the most powerful messages, oh my, it was so brilliant. And I, I, I almost, it's hard for me to look at the video because I'm just all full of oil, even my hair, the oil was everywhere, you know, I was just like, oh my God. I don't know if I properly prepared myself to go to the event, you know. Uh, time was going, so we just had to get there. I didn't know what was going to happen. Place is full of people. So I, during the message, I started talking about some things, the ills of the society, whatever's going in the church and all that. And I looked at the people and I went, hey, and everybody shouted in unison, we know them. <laughs> A big voice, all the people together at one time, we know them. So I thought, yeah, and I, I began to speak further. I said, yeah, you, you know them, but you don't do anything about it. But I came to do something about it. Lift your hands up. So the Lord, the Lord had me say to this man of God, in 30 seconds, I said, here's what's going to happen. God is going to take them, God is going to side, they tried to sideline you, God is going to sideline them and he's going to give you their spaces. He, the anointing hit him, he lifted his hands, people are almost crying, it, the, it was so powerful. I said it just that quick in like 15, 15, 20 seconds. And the power of God hit him. 
And he said, I, he said, I have to invite you. I have to invite you to come. And I said, that's a city that I'm intrigued by. I said, in fact, let me tell you something that happened. The last time I was there, the Lord had me prophesy that that town would become a commercial city. One year later to the date, on the same day, in the first week of December, I think it was on a Friday, I don't know what the date, the, exactly one year later, the president of the country flew there and went to sign official documents incorporating the city as the name of it and then city. Now it's called blank and city. It's not called just the, the word anymore. Yeah, is that amazing? So God now wants to build something there. And I'm a creative builder. Anywhere I go, I release things for industry. I'm, a, I'm known for that. You know, you know me for that, too. So I thought, I'm very interested in that. And they have a beautiful game park with mountains and all the animals. The time I went there, the monkeys all dropped, up, jumped on my car and scratched my car up. I didn't care. I said, take it to get waxed. You know, they wax it and buff it out, you know. That these monkeys could come and look at me and they could sit on my car anytime. I'm amazed. I took the greatest pictures and the greatest video. Oh, my Lord. I can make my own Nat Geo channel. And I'm, people encourage me, say, I need to do it. We'll do it when we go to places, we'll film it. Another thing happened yesterday. I met the most beautiful people from the Maasai tribe. And these are sophisticated people that were born. One said they were born in the furthest part of the bush. As far as you could go in Maasai land, all the way at the end, in the lowest, you know, the most rural bush, the real bush, 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 outer bush, outer limits bush. You know, some places they could call the bush and it's a, maybe a bit organized. Out there, there was like nothing. And that's where they came from. And now they're a sophisticated business person. Lift your hands. And they connected with me. And they still have that royal thing about the tribe. It's in their blood. And the bit, the el elegant, excellent business person that they are all in one. And, and I told them, I said, the governor uh, of the Maasai land, wants, they, want, they want me to come. And uh, another bishop is arranging it. We're going to have an event to go and pray and prophesy over the government, the governor and the, gov and the government and the leadership. And all of the people from that tribe will be there. Many, many, not all, of course, there's millions. But many, many people, a lot of leadership, and we're going to have an event to release the fire upon that thing. And these, these two business people said, we, I will, I will, we will come with you and even escort you when you're going. How is that for VIP favor? Lift your hands. What's in you has to have a place of expression. And it doesn't matter what happened. Even my friend from, from, uh, from uh, the United Kingdom left the earth, but came right back because God knew their assignment and was going to make sure it happens. The way that's a very dramatic miracle is the same way that God will do very dramatic miracles for us. And the Lord had me speak last night about the surprise. He's the God of surprises. Lift your hands. He'll surprise you. He surprised me this week in so many ways. It's like it's like things that are destined to happen. They will just happen because they're on schedule. And whether it's the, the calendar day or date, whatever, whenever that is, it's just the fact that they have, they have to happen because they're part of the plan of God to elevate you and make you influential and make you expand and make you get all the things done that he wants you to do. And then you look inside yourself and you say, I was saying to myself, I said, I'm made in this area. I have all this in me. I feel like this. If I have a, a way to play her voice, you listen to her voice, you just be like, that's melodic. I mean, she's just, it's a gift to have that accent and the way she speaks and the tone. And the, so it's brilliant. It's like she's, deaf, she's a celeb. She's a celeb. She, she's on it. She's on it. And whatever the devil tried to do against her is broken. Whatever the devil wants to do against me is broken. Whatever the devil wants to do against you is broken in Jesus' mighty name. And it is permanent, thus and so, now and forever. So they said, uh, sir, do you have both? Do you have both? I said, yeah. What do you need? 
can you help us? Our phone went off, and we don't have the charger, and we got to get, uh, do you, can we use your boat? I was like, yeah, tell me. So I, I'm trying to think, what do I do? So I said, what do I type in for the destination, please? And I said, they don't, you, know, you don't have to pay by car. You don't have to have on your account. Just pay cash, you know, so I can get it for you. Do you know in America, they don't do that. America, it's all through the system. You can only use your own. The drivers don't take cash. I don't think, they, they didn't before. I wouldn't, especially the way the world's going now. They want to try to, these antichrists, they want to do so much, you know. Make it a castless society. You see where it's all going, right? So, like, the fact that they didn't take anything but your card on file before, it might have been cash before and credit later, but it wasn't credit before and now cash. I'm sure they haven't done it. So around here, lift your hands. You don't know you have a few privileges. You could just pay cash. And if you don't want anybody to know your name, let me tell you a secret. Just open an account under a funny name. Pick a cartoon character. Call yourself Sylvester the Cat. Call yourself Tom and Jerry. What's another one? Call yourself Popeye the Sailor Man. And they'd be like, I wonder if someone would do that. When they call you, say, hey, it's Popeye, right? Yeah, Popeye the Sailor Man. No, I... Just pick a name that you like and put in an email address and have a phone number, you know, and you don't use M-Pesa, right? Just cash, 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 because you're dealing with a lot of crazy people out there. I've had I've seen a few doozies that were pretty possessed, you know, and they also don't know how to drive. So those kind of people, you don't need to, they don't need to know who you are, especially if you're a, if you're a prominent person, <laughs> You don't need to be throwing your name everywhere. Go incognito, you know. Be like Total Man. Take a different car, take a different car, take a different car, change your clothes, get disguised, because people are always after you. Know, the guy always thought people were trying to kill him, you know. Probably so, because, you know. Anyway, that's another story. And he's left this earth, he's gone. So it uh, doesn't matter anymore. It's just stories now. He's not around to contend with. I have a friend who worked for him that was killed. Very mysterious circumstances. Yep. In fact, he was my driver. And he's dead today. Young man. He was murdered. And he worked for that guy. So I don't know what happened. Very sad, isn't it? So I said, what's the address? Oh, it's something lane. Starts with a T, T, A, it's something. Blah, 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 blah. And I put it in. I was like, and then it came up 530, 530. I said, boy, that's far. Where are you going? It's not around here. I said, yeah, it's pretty far. It's up like in Hardy, Hardy, whatever, somewhere up there. I said, wow, great. And they were so happy. And they asked, here's what they said. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to get somewhere. They said, what do you do? I don't know why I said it. Usually I just like, ah, just nothing, you know, it's okay. You know. I said, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an author. I'm a television uh, producer. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a businessman. I'm an investor. I'm a, you know, and they looked at me like, wow. And I thought to myself, why did I say all that? And, and this morning I had a thought. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you something here. Are you getting this? Say what you want to be. Like, say what you are, but take it to the next level. Because something in me was saying, you know, because you, I, I don't know what happened to me the last couple of years. I've, I've gone into the, the biggest tone it down mode in my life on earth. I've never been this hidden and God, because God's preparing me for something. I see the hand of God. I totally disappeared from a lot of uh, things. Led, I don't, by, by the Lord, I don't know why. I left the scene of a lot of things. I stopped doing a lot of things. You know, God knows what he's doing. And a great prophet, again, from the great nation of England, told me what it, what it was about. He said, God has hidden you 
for a short season because he's about to unveil you globally. And he said it will happen this year. It will happen in this time. Watch. Can I tell you, it's, it's, already, it's already in motion. So I felt, I, you get to the point, I don't know if it's like Moses in the wilderness that he couldn't even talk anymore and that God was going to raise him up to be this great leader. He, was, he came from the palace, he went into the dusty land and became like a fool and then came back as the warrior, as the warrior general king to lead everybody out of bondage. Lift your hands. I don't know why God, there's something, there's something about all this. So I thought, and I was saying these things like what, what normally I should say to people. And I felt kind of, you know, because I got so used to being like toned down and low key. And I thought, wait a minute. That's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're about to do in all these things. We're, we're, we're doing that. And then I started to feel, started to think about, uh, we need to do this, we need to do this, this has to be done, this has to be arranged, this has to be created, it has to be, and we have, these are things we have to do right now. So I want to prophesy to everybody good. If you're a rebel and a jerk and a, a con person and a, a hater, underminer, a, a, a debauched person, a fraudulent preacher, a, a, a crooked businessman or lady, or you're, you're messed up in your life, I have nothing good to promise you except hopefully you'll get delivered. Hopefully the power of God will touch you, you'll repent and start to walk right, and then you start your journey from there to uh, uh, go on the road to maybe getting blessed. But I have no blessing to promise right now for people like that. But for people that are good, and you're serious, and you're avoiding sin, and you're pressing on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, and you're really zealously ready to walk with him in a higher realm, I declare over you right now that God is about to release his power upon you. What he's made you to be must be manifested now in this season. Why God seems to take us on certain journeys, it's a mystery. But nonetheless, what he's ordained on the highest possible level has to happen. And I'm a witness of the surprises of the Lord, the miraculous open doors, the miraculous visitations, because it was there all along. I was saying this last night, that there's something about um, God meeting you at the level you're at, coming to open that all up for you because that's who you are. And it comes as a surprise, but really it's in the plan of, it's really it's in the plan of action that God has. Lift your hands, let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Father, I thank you that it's also time to do warfare against the works of darkness. I bind them in Jesus' name. They, they cannot operate even what I've, 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 I've seen happen and what, what, what the enemy was attempting to do couldn't succeed and nothing he'll ever do will succeed. God Almighty, help me. I ask you, Father, for, for divine permission on this. Let me please preach a series, a message on this about the warrior. And I'll just say this is like a can opener, volume one, with a little bit of a pre, pre, prelude to it. But I haven't gotten into it. Uh, really, but to bring it all out, what a warrior is, what a warrior does, what a, the warriors we need to be. Oh, my God. Let it happen in Jesus' name. But, Father, before that, I just declare that you're going to cause anything the devil tried to do to leave us, to be stopped in his tracks. Anything the devil put in us to hurt us in any way, any attack on the physical man, any kind of... Uh, uh, effect of anything evil it's broken out of off of us right now and it's coming out of us right now and it will have no root no effect no way of staying with us at all the fire of god is upon us and coming upon us in greater ways in these days and it burns it all out but it the fire also anoints us to be warriors of the kingdom and miracle producers miracle workers glory carriers, people that are carrying the power of the Holy Ghost to bring change in this generation. 
and I declare it thus and so right now. Satan, you foul, filthy devil, you defeated foe. Anything that you want to attempt to do will never succeed against me. It will never succeed against any of God's good people. It will never succeed. We're not going anywhere. You have no control. You have no power. You have no dominion. We are the dominion people, not you. You are defeated. You are an intruder. You are an illegal alien. You're not, you, you were thrown out of the garden. You were made into a snake in the garden. Adam and Eve were chased out and you were just left there. But God gave you no blessing. God gave you no jurisdiction. Whatever you have, you stole it. And it's just that the Lord hasn't come to change the seasons yet of the new dispensation. But that day is coming and you will be forever burning in fire and then in the lake of fire for all of eternity. There's no blessing in you. You are a liar. You're the father of lies. You're the murderer from the beginning. You're the ones that caused uh, Cain to kill Abel. <clears throat> the murder started then. You were the one that told, that, that tried to deceive, that deceived Eve to say, has God said, isn't it okay that you do this anyway? You're the trickster. You're the con man. You're the defeated foe. You're the criminal from the beginning. And I declare right now that you will have no place in us. I feel the fire of God falling here right now. I feel the anointing on my physical body, but I see something coming from heaven right now. It's dropping down from above me, coming from the other world down here, and it's coming like fire is being dropped, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to begin to burn everything out in people. The most massive deliverances we've ever seen are about to happen. The fire of heaven is falling upon God's elect sons and daughters. And we are going to see the outpouring of the Spirit of God. It's going to bring revival, reformation, breakthrough, revolution, restitution, reconciliation. Oh, the reconciliation I saw among the brethren and the sister in yesterday and the day before. I was shocked. It was a surprise from you, Lord, that these people that I knew from, you know, and, and they, were just, they just embraced me. We just came together. It was just so divine. And Lord, Lord, make me a blessing to them too. I don't want to just say that they all have to just come to bless me all the time. I also want to be a blessing to them. And I thank you, Lord, that you're providing for things. I saw it this morning. I saw it in the spirit. I've been seeing it all day. There's a way that you're elevating us that we will be our brother's keeper. It's just not for them to keep us, but we will help them and extend our hand to them and the, the things they're doing in the kingdom will come up. I pray that you'll control their emotions and, and, and ways of things that they don't flip out out of the way, that they can walk straight and be straight and really get to the destination place because this is a time in the body of Christ in the earth of elevation and promotion and whatever it is the devil did to try to hurt and destroy anyone, it is bound and destroyed by my words right now under the fire of God. Devil, you tried, but you, you lost. You, you tried, but you could never succeed. You threw your best, but it still failed. Whatever you try to devise, the scripture says, it is written right here in Isaiah 54, 17. I am the Lord thy God. That, that causes everything that would try to come against you to be destroyed. And nothing fashioned against you shall ever succeed against you. By the evil <clears throat> world and the spirit or evil people that are controlled and touched by evil and demonic forces. They will always fail. They will always f fall. They will never be able to stand against us. Nothing, no weapon they devise, no scheme they devise, no thing they send, nothing they try to do will ever get to us because no weapon formed against me shall ever succeed or prosper. It will never happen. God said in, in, in Psalm 2 verse 8, uh, the, the second Psalm, the 48th verse, he said, I in the heavens will hear and see these fools and put them in derision and laugh at them because I, there, there's nothing they can do. And then the psalmist said, Lord, give me the nations. And God, you said, 
after you had said to him, ask of me. You're the one that gave the invitation according to Psalm 2, verse 8. You, you, yeah, you said it. Ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your own inheritance. And you said in the, in the course of that Psalm, who are these fools that want try to try to hurt you and stop you? I will, I will hear, I will hear it, I'll see it from heaven and put them in derision and laugh at them because they're utter fools. The demonic and the demonically uh, instrumental humans that want to go that way. As I've always said, the devil and his ugly friends. They are defeated. Their works are destroyed. They can do nothing. If they hate, that's their own opinion and posture. If they want to try to subvert, they can't do it because it's not permissible. If they, you know, they could just see us from afar. And this morning, rising, see us rising. And I saw this. The scripture this morning, I, 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 I saw this again. And I was praying, uh, yeah, the, uh, late, late this morning. I was praying and I, and I said, Lord, the psalm said in 23, the psalmist said, man, I'm so caught up in the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, my. I can hardly speak anymore. The, the Lord, He said, uh, uh, you'll set a table for us in the presence of our enemies. I'm seeing it happening. I've seen it happen. It's happening more. Everything you've ordained will rise. Anything you've not ordained will fall off. Anything that the enemy tries to devise against us, it will, it will crash and burn. It'll fail. It'll fall. It'll be foiled. It'll be stopped. It'll be broken. It'll be severed. It'll be unrepairable. It will be annihilated. It will be destroyed. It will be crushed, and nothing by any means shall hurt us in any way, shape, or form. Lord, you said the dominion mandate, as I've been teaching on dominion, you said the dominion mandate was, was this, that we would walk across the earth and have everything under our control. Dominion is sovereignty and control. It's a sovereign rule. It's the, ru it's the walk of a royal. Last night you brought some word out of my spirit. I've never heard anybody say it, and I've never said it. It just came by the Holy Ghost. I said, I want to call certain people the loyal royals. We are loyalty unto the royalty. We have loyalty unto the royalty. We are royal loyals. Faramalendo shaita. Ay candele fotayikasha. Everybody should take more time to pray in the Holy Ghost because you're speaking the divine mysteries that Jehovah gives to us to speak out. And those things produce. Imagine a language that has no human element in it. And that's the thing, that we, the power of speaking in other tongues. We could do a whole teaching on that. And I trust I will at some point. A whole teaching on the benefit of speaking in tongues. What does it do for you? What, what's the, what are the benefits of it? What, what is, what's the power in it? It's the, it's the coded language that even the enemy can't hear or know. And it's the thing you'll cause to speak your perfect will. The words we speak. What did I just say? It came from you. It's being released in the spirit world. It's producing the miraculous in the earth. It's the most supernatural thing. Now this uh, uh, economic forum with the W in front. I don't want to say the whole word because I don't want to engage the bots and the algorithms. I just have no time for those idiots and devils. I have some friends that are speaking out. And when they're preaching live on television, they'll be shouting at, hey, you get this, you people in the government. They got that assignment, therefore, but I, uh, anyway, I don't, I don't need to say words. They're going to be picked up by the computer systems. But this, this forum that they just had, and here's what they tried to do to the, to the a certain denomination in the body of Christ, to invite them there and tell them, you need to not preach on prosperity. You need to not preach about about uh, uh, healing and, and, and about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Those three things was what Satan and the Luciferians made a writ and a decree in some organization. It's going on right now in the, in the high echelons of these world uh, Luciferian organizations, and they're trying to even bring it to the church. There's one guy who's an atheist, a complete devil. If I said his name, you'd all know his name. An old fool. He'll die and go to hell. If a guy like that, can he ever repent? I doubt it, but for his sake, we hope he does. For his own good, but he's done a lot of damage. So 
You look at a guy like Adolf Hitler or Idi Amin and you say, did you hope they repented? Because look at how many people they killed. Don't they deserve the judgment if they escaped themselves from the flames that they put other people in? Amen. They were gassing people in the ovens. They killed millions and millions and millions of innocent people. And now all of a sudden they're going to be okay and rescued. See, it doesn't really make sense. But in the, in the providence of God, he could show his... I, 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 really, I really don't think so. In fact, people have had visions. They've gone to hell and they've seen Hitler there burning over and over. I really tend to believe that because the, the kind of man that he was, the, 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 satanic, the satanic prince of evil that he was. And uh, I, I couldn't see him escaping when he put that horror on so many other people. So a lot of people, you know, these kind of people, they won't repent, but the damage they've done. And here's the thing I want to say. They tried to pay preachers and, and evangelical movements and give them money. Say, we'll give you this much money if you kind of play ball with us and go this way. Now the forum came out. This happened recently, like the last year or two, last year, year and a half. Uh, uh, this uh, earlier part of this year, probably from the end of last year. And they're trying to infiltrate the body of Christ, pay them money, put them in five-star hotels, bring them there, give them money. Give, you take the money from a wicked person, you damn yourself. Because they, they know what you want. Say, oh, we'll support you, we'll give you this money. Don't take it. I have a friend in America, uh, a great apostle, one of the greatest uh, in our generation, a mighty man of God. And, and the time when the government was literally giving out money for people to shut their churches. Some initials of PP something, whatever, it stood for something. And he told all his preacher friends, don't take that money. And they said, yeah, but we have so many staff and so much land. And they calculated that we could even be given a grant of like $500,000, a million dollars, a million and a half, two million dollars. So, and they were telling him, you have such a big work, so many staff, so many people, so many, they could give you like two million dollars. He said, I'll never touch a penny of it. I don't want nothing from the government. And he warned them. He said, what you give them now, they're going to come back for it. You think it's a gift, but it has strings attached. You don't play ball with them. Watch, they're going to come from you for you. And you know, it's kind of going that way. And these are the people that want to dictate, like you need to marry, same, you know, same, uh, you know what I mean? Do those, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to follow. And then you, you have to become a, a, a center for this, you know, the stupid thing. You know, and some pastors actually fell for that. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? They told their people not to come. They believed the lie that it was unsafe to come to church. But yet they were open up for these people to come in with the things, you know, uh, to become a center. And they were given money to do that. I think you're, you're in danger of hellfire when you compromise like that. So this is going to be the day, and I speak as God's prophet, of a separation, even within the church, from the real remnant that are filled with the fire of God, from the others that are just compromising. And the way you keep yourself from that nonsense is by being filled with the Holy Ghost. You can see beyond. You can see evil. You can discern devils. You're not going to walk as a mere man on the earth, subject to every kind of thing. And as time goes on, it's going to get worse and worse because we, we've entered the last days and they want to set it up for the ultimate thing of destruction, the Great Tribulation, the Antichrist, the Armageddon, the whole, all of this. And, and, and that's where they want to get to. So as time goes on, in actual fact, we think it's just going to be alleviated. No, the world, the last two years, the world has literally, literally changed. I'm not happy about it. I hate it. I remember the, what we call the good old days. Everybody was free. No restrictions. No persecution. You could say what you want. Do what you want. Remember those days? But it's not like that anymore. You want to eat good food. You can't find a good restaurant now in certain places. All the hotels closed. All this control, manipulations of governments, all kinds of oppression, all kinds of tyr tyranny of the enemy. They want to set such bad things up. It's like it, the world has changed, you know. It's crossed over to another place. I don't like it, but you know what we have to do is we have to stay above it and keep on and say, I'm going to be war, listen to my words here, I'm going to become more of a warrior now than ever because I see the evil that's on the earth. 
I heard a great general say this. Uh, I, I was with yesterday. He said this. He said, does all these things going on that are so horrible not even affect you? And he said, he and his church, they fasted for one year in the year, uh, a few years back, when there was great danger in his nation. And they saw it, and they had people praying, thousands of people. Every morning they were there for one year, fasting and praying for an entire year. The entire year. To turn back evil because he saw the danger. They saw it. And he said in the midst of that, there were pastors and preachers. There were business as usual. You know, come, sing a song, make the announcements, do a message, bring your offering. Ha, ha, ha. Asleep at the wheel. Don't care about what's going on in the society. Not seeing the forces of, of terrorism and, 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 and the other religions and what trying to take up all of this stuff. It's going on right now in your midst where you are right now. Matthew 13, 25 said, while you were asleep, the enemy came to sow the tares amongst the wheat. What are you going to do with that? Tell me it's not happening. It's happening. Do people talk about that? They're like, oh, no, the new president. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Keep our prayer thing going. Yeah. Maybe he'll give us some money. And then they have all the things. They have all these whatever. And who's going to go in the face of the leaders now and say, you shouldn't have put that person there. You shouldn't have done that. You're giving these people. What are you doing? Who's going to talk to him like that? Someone says you can't correct the person who's feeding you. True. You can't, you can't, you can't be a, an outside warrior to a person who's got you in his pocket. Huh? Without saying names. Is this... Is this is this something that's happened of late? Oh yeah, I see it. I saw it through it. I saw it through it from the beginning. Sure enough, the Lord kept me hidden again. I was a bit annoyed. I was like, okay, I wanted to go to this thing and that thing, and the Lord just forbade me to go. I thought, okay, there's something in that. Why? Because I'm a warrior. I'm not gonna dance with these people. I'm a man of God. I'm higher than any prime minister. I have a higher office than the president. People may not see that. I was at a, uh, an event where the governor of a certain county came. We were at a meeting, and he met with me and wanted to see me, but then I knew he was going to lose the election. <laughs> Happened with a few people. Some of them got mad. They wanted to have me come to pray for the candidate, yeah? Who's a friend who I had prayed for them before? High-level people, yeah? But I refused to go. God forbade me to go because I knew they weren't going to win the election and I thought after the fact what business would I have as God's anointed prophet to be standing around with you and you want me to pray pray prophet pray here's the mic here pray speak a word speak a word you know they all do that right what am I going to say oh the Lord favors you bless you it's a lie and I knew they weren't going to win so I stayed away from it what does that make me? To, I'm the boss. Dancing around with all this stuff in the compromise of men. Can't do that. Not if you want to be a warrior. Leaders, real leaders will fly alone. The eagles fly alone. A real leader can stand on his own. I do it. I've done it. I, mean, I feel the anointing here right now. I tell you, I feel the anointing. I've done it and I'm doing it. You have to be like that. Why? To keep your position with heaven. You don't work for anybody on the earth. I don't work for anybody on the earth. I work for the boss, the almighty God, the creator in the heavens of the earth. It's the biggest responsibility. It's the biggest privilege. But I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to talk about the blessing of it. But it's because it's also the biggest responsibility. It takes the, the biggest sacrifice for you to walk this thing out. Called ministry. As an ambassador, a royal ambassador of the kingdom of God. There's very few people. It was said, a lot of title bearers, a lot of people throwing titles on themselves, a lot of people putting themselves in positions, self-appointed or taking positions or putting something in front of their name, but there are very few leaders. Almost none among them are true warriors or true leaders.
But I see the church, I see some in the church emerging and rising. Let's lift our hands. I'm so caught up here. Oh my. And this, this thing of the warrior, it needs to be emphasized. Two great characteristics of a real leader, not a weak leader, a strong leader, is kindness and toughness. You have to have them in equal measure. And if you're more on one side than the other, you have to round it off a bit. Let's all, let's all work on it. To be very kind, but to be very tough and principled. You see people that are having issues, you can't correct them because you're maybe afraid of, you know. And there's so much, uh, somebody, yeah, yeah, this woman of God from England was telling me, so much compromise in the church. I said, How, how's London? How's the city? How's the area? How, how's the climate? Terrible. The church, you know, the political scene is a farce. The new prime minister resigned after a few weeks. The old one that got pushed out is trying to come back. I said, how's he? Is he a good guy? Oh, and they said, bah, 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 bah. I was like, ah. Oh. So I won't say on air now what they told me. But I thought, oh boy, really? Yeah, he used this and that and that and that and doing this and doing that and doing that, like this and like that. I'm like, ooh, yeah. I had, I had, I had heard some of that. I was hoping it wasn't so, but. And then uh, the church, like everybody's trying to please each other. She said, I remember the time when you were even preaching and talking about people, how they dress. I said, really? When was that? It was so many years ago. And, and she said, I felt convicted that I go to church. I wear a long dress, elegant and everything covered, you know. And I thought, wow. She said, these days people go in any kind of casual thing, dress any old way, like, 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 it's no big deal to go to the house of God. And the preachers trying to be pleasing the people, thinking that they're winning more people, but really they're losing, losing their grip, they're losing the fire. I, I'm telling you as a fact, I met the man, I had time with him, he prayed for me. We spent time together. There were people lined up to, to see him, they couldn't get to him, and he took so much time with me. It was a space and time where heaven, something happened to me. <laughs> it was beyond description, I tell you. And the Lord said to me last night, he said, this thing, this impartation you received, it'll carry out, it'll, it's in, it, it'll be strong. You don't feel it all yet, but you're going to see so many things. I said, yeah. And that thing, and, and this is a man that's full of the fire. He's not trying to people please. Yeah, he's kind, he's loving, he's beautiful. Someone with a good spirit that's like, you know, loving. You, you people gravitate to, but he's, but he's tough. He, he's not like looking to please anybody. His whole, his whole platform is for God. Then he's known for that. I had heard, I had read some things he wrote, a couple of little things that he wrote. I was like, wow, this guy, this man is on another plan. He's on another level. And no wonder, here's the point, here's the proof. End of the story. He has the largest church in the world. One of them. There's about five now. It's about five. Five. You count them on one hand. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe ten. I don't know. But the largest ministries on the earth. And I'm talking about in numbers of people. The largest buildings. That seat. There's three domes now that seat 100,000. Three. And they're all in that country by men that are not compromisers. She so said, well, you have to be a people pleaser, loosen up, lighten up, you know, be like everything. No, you're compromising yourself. Men that stand for the word and the fire strictly in power. Yeah, they're loving. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, they're full of love. Yeah, they pray. Miracles happen. People love that. They come. But, but their, whole, their whole essence of their being is for the fire of God. Lift your hands. Can you, can you see that? Can you see that? The other stuff is compromised. It's, to me, I'm feeling stirred up, even though I'm thinking about this today more. It's blasphemous. It's against God. It's a disdain against God. It's a dishonor to God to have any other position than what Jehovah would say is, is, is uh, his, his way of seeing things. 
The church needs to catch this. Never be ashamed of your posture of being a God pleaser and not a people pleaser. Now be loving, be kind, be fun. You can do all that and still have, keep your... But the greatest ministries in these days will be the ones that are full of the fire. And that's what the devil's after now, you see. Trying to dictate to whole denominations in America. Come against prosperity, healing, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And here's how he got one organization, the big... Uh, it starts with Southern, and there's another word after it. It's a big denomination. Because they, they always had an error thing against the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that denomination. So these guys, the devil, Luciferians, they saw that and go, ah, we could probably get them on that one because they don't like that Holy Spirit baptism thing anyway. As a, their doctrinal position is that, remember, there's a group of people in America in the church used to say speaking, of the de speaking in tongues was of the devil. We don't hear that much these days, but back some decades ago, that's the things they used to say. Those holy roller Pentecostals speaking in tongues, that's the work of the devil. That's what they actually called the work of the Holy Ghost the work of the devil. They did. If you were Pentecostal, I remember Kenneth Hagin, in the olden days, he was, a, he was in that Baptist, uh, yeah, I said it, in the Baptist. And he, was a, uh, and he became, he got filled with the Holy Ghost, and he said he received the left foot of fellowship from, the, from them, <laughs> which means... I'm kicking you the blessed assurance. Get out of here. You, you, that Holy Spirit thing. So you see, they already had that problem, yeah? So now the devil sees the three threats as what? Healing, miracles, prosperity, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit getting filled with the fire of God because that's what changes everything. You have enough money, you move the masses. You move the multitudes. Media, money, masses... Uh, multitudes, miracles, all right, will chase the devil out of any place if you have enough of that going on. So he's most scared of that. The five M's, I call it. The masses, the multitudes, the money, the media, and the miraculous. And these people want to set up something now to tell the church, you shouldn't be into all that. We'll pay you. We'll support you. We'll give you money. You're going to take money from the devil? The devil can buy you out? A real man of God would say, get out of here. Take." Remember the one that said in the scripture, whatever you have will perish with you. Get out of here. Whatever money you have or anything else. The apostles said to the man, the crippled man at the gate, beautiful. It wasn't that they were broke because they had money at home. They might, have had it, they might not have had it in their... Uh, a secret compartment in their sandals or in a pocket somewhere or in a bag. But they had money because the scripture says in Acts they had all things in common. People sold their properties. Ananias and Sapphira fell dead because they lied about a real estate transaction. Because other people were selling their property and bringing it to the, uh, to, to, to the house fellowships of the, of the apostles, okay? To fund the kingdom. And when they lied to the Holy Ghost, Peter said, what tempted you to lie to the Holy Ghost? And the man fell down dead. Acts chapter 5. Ananias. Sapphira came along some time ago and said, the men that buried your husband some time ago will also take you and bury you. She lied again. She dropped dead right there. And great fear came upon the church. Huh? Great fear came upon the church. Said, don't compromise. So God did an extreme thing to make an extreme point. You never want to play with his stuff. Lift your hands. You never want to take nothing from the devil. You never want to compromise yourself in any way. Separate yourself. Come out from among them and touch not the unclean things, say it to the Lord. I'll bless you. I'll raise you up. I'll provide for you. In Jesus' name. Anything the devil tried to do is null and void. Anything he will ever try to do will never succeed. Father, we thank you for your healing power. Just lay your hands on yourself somewhere right now. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your heart. Touch yourself somewhere. And say, Lord, I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I am 
prospering in my life to overflowing abundance. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm healed, I'm prospering, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, the overflowing, the fire of God is coming upon me in new ways so I can be anointed and empowered, energized, strengthened, made more brilliant. To, you'll raise up other people to flow with all this that I can get everything done you've assigned me to do in Jesus' name and the devil can never stop it. Ugly people can never stop it. Wrong evildoers can never stop it. And I speak again as we're jump, about to jump off here that the fire of God is hitting the forces of darkness and every demon spirit that's been sent to do anything against me, against any of us, any of God's good people, is bound and chained and inoperable in the name of Jesus. They'll never have their way. They'll never have their way. In Jesus' name. We are victorious. We are the overcomers. We are the lords and kings and gods, rulers on the earth. Small g, small k, small l, under the big K, the big L, and the big G. The king of kings and the lord of lords. We're those under kings. We're those under lords. We're those under gods. You get it? Doctrinally, do your homework. Study it out. Psalm 82 and also what Jesus said, ye are gods. Revelation 1.6, you're kings and priests unto the Most High. Under the high priest, the great high priest, which is Jesus Christ, we're the under shepherds, we're the under lords. You get it? Not under, not under, maybe that's not the right word. We're his assistants, but we have his nature. And in the order of dominion again, which is the name of this great ministry, the dominion life, Dominion living is that we have his nature. We rule everything on the earth in Jesus' name. All right, I love you. I've said a lot. Thomas Manton IV here will flow more in this order. Receive the fire of God right now. I just, as I stretch my hand out to you, be touched by heaven in Jesus' name. New things are going to happen for you you've never seen starting today. And it's just going to be astounding. Share your testimony. A lot of people... Uh, said to me in the last couple of days when I just spoke words over them or they were telling me something, you'll be hearing my testimony. I said, good, get in touch. I'll be sharing my testimony with you. And this man of God began to tell me after I prayed, those that fought you are being uh, sidelined and you're going to step into their spaces. The Lord says, I'm going to even do it in the city you're in. And then he said, let me confirm, let me testify. I was recording. I recorded what he said. We can all hear it. It's, uh, it's, it's astounding. He said, I went to bring the idea to try to do something for the kingdom. And these guys, they fought. They sidelined me. They tried to destroy me. I thought, yeah, they're really men of God. <laughs> I mean, nice guys, yeah? They're supposed to be in brotherly love. You say you're a saint and you want to act like the devil, a killer. You see what's going on, even in the church. I said, don't worry. He said, I'll be sharing more with you. And he's invited me to come out. We're going to do something great for that city. Lift your hands. The fire of God's going to hit the place. Many events, many cities, many regions, including the capital city here. We're going to see so much happen in the coming days. The move of God that God spoke about is already manifested here. And it's in motion. You jump in and be a part of it in Jesus' name. You want to tithe, so connect. Offer, do what the Lord's telling you to do. If, 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 if the links are in the headings of the titles of the messages on how you can communicate with us and give into this ministry and become a partner by doing so. If, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you want to just recommit yourself to him more, say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you. I receive you as my Lord and King. Forgive me for anywhere I was not. If, I'm, if you're just committing yourself to the Lord now, you didn't know about it before, but if you've already... We're walking with the Lord in some degree and you got away from his best. Come back home. Come back into the fire of God. And I declare you, he's bringing you there right now. And say with your mouth, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming home. I'm here with you. I receive you. I'm sorry. Take me to yourself. Do all you want to do with me in Jesus' name. I'm yours forever. And I will have eternal life with you because I'm receiving and I'm, and I'm going to do my part to walk with you 
In Jesus' mighty name, so be it. We're going to take Holy Communion. I'll come on in another minute. And we're all going to take Holy Communion. You can do that according to 1 Corinthians 11, starting in the 23rd verse, talks about the Lord's table. What happens there is you, you're just connecting with the resurrection uh, life of God, of the power that Jesus carries. And that's, what, that's why we do it, to receive more from him. I'm Thomas Manton IV. You are the warrior. You are the victor, not the victim. You're chosen of God. Get filled with the fire and get busy about the Father's business greater than you've ever done in your life. In Jesus' name, you're blessed. I love you. Talk to you guys soon.